it's got to be seen as a pretty powerful statement that the most successful program in the platform's history was one made in South Korea. It, it is. Look, it's a surprise. But uh, one thing about Reed and Ted is they are managing the service as a global service. They have their 17 billion annual content spend, and they're very good about understanding that it's a global audience. It's not just a U.S. audience and trying to export U.S. content to the world. Uh, so a surprise in, in some ways. But again, if, uh, if you look inside the organization, I think uh, you'll see that they are very much managing it as a, a global content platform. Yeah. And, and Hastings said, you know, listen, their desire is to be the first to choice in entertainment. And that obviously could include or will include at some point uh, perhaps a more robust offering in gaming. Are they succeeding in that mission? I think they are. And uh, you only need to look at the, the time when Facebook was down during the, the last month and Netflix saw an uptick of 14 to 15 percent uh, in usage during that time frame. Facebook is, is one of their direct competitors. They, and Reid has said this many times in the past, they don't see the other services as their direct competitors. Uh, they're competing uh, to have the audience be the first choice for entertainment, whatever, wherever that entertainment comes from. So obviously when Facebook, Instagram is out of the mix, you'll see the numbers for, for, for Netflix shoot straight up. Hey, Simon, um, to the degree that they are able to lower production costs by ostensibly creating content uh, that originates from overseas, does that mean that the giant showrunner um, packages that have been handed out to the stars of the industry are in danger? I mean, should The Rock be worried about his comp going down? I, I look, I don't think so, because The Rock, if he has a, uh, a new show that he's developing out of his own production company, he's absolutely going to go in and pitch to all the usual suspects, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, uh, and there'll be competition here in the United States for that. But there's, there's so the, as I said before, the, these other services are in some ways programming US content to export to the world. Netflix, on the other hand, they'll compete for those big ticket shows absolutely here in the US, but they're also finding those undiscovered gems in international markets. Yeah, I mean, just to dig into that a little bit more, Simon, I'm, and I know we've talked about this quite a bit in the past, but valuing those hits, the metrics for engagement, it does seem like they're constantly tinkering that, or at least tinkering in terms of disclosures to uh, investors and shareholders as well. So how does that factor into content creators recruiting people to, to come to that platform versus those other competitors, whether you want to call them that or not, um, those other competitors that are also looking for streaming content right now? Yeah, that's a great question. Certainly, there's. Uh, you only need to look at the the hiccups that Disney had recently with Scarlett Johansson and the way that they were managing relationships with talent, you don't hear that coming out of Netflix quite so much in terms of challenges. And they're very good at keeping the content creators happy and understanding their needs and helping them make the decision that Netflix is the right service for them to deliver the content to. Uh, so Ted and Reid have, have tremendous taste, and it. it isn't just relative to selecting content, but it's in relation to selecting executives that know how to find that content and know how to pitch to the content creators and build relationships with content creators. So I think you're going to continue to see uh, them outperform, certainly relative to the international markets, and, and uh, be a preferred home for many of the, the content creators here in the U.S. as well. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.